In this presentation, we're going to be covering how active people can be integrated in with other uh, components of the SOA uh, frameworks, in particular the JBoss ESB and JBoss rules. This particular presentation is targeted at developers, uh, in particular developers who are interested in using Beeple for service orchestration while leveraging their existing investment in a uh, services-oriented architecture. Some of the assumptions that we're going to be making in this uh, presentation and demonstration is that you have an understanding of web service concepts, in particular things like WSDLs and schemas, are somewhat familiar to you, and that you have some high-level familiarity with both the JBoss ESB product and the JBoss rules product, or drools. <clears throat> One of the aspects of trying to bring together um, active people with JBoss ESB and JBoss rules is to properly define a separation of concern for each respective product. In particular, we have a, a split between the application and business logic, as well as connectivity and integration logic. Within the application and business logic containers, we have orchestration services, um, uh, and um, also a part of that is business services, which are used by the orchestration services, and uh, the other part of that is decision services, which can also be used as um, key inputs and outputs to the orchestration services. And underlying all that is a set of infrastructure services, as we'll see, um, providing a lot of the uh, transformation and routing capabilities that is typical in, in, in that particular uh, container. If we were to layer on the different products we've talked about, Active Beeple would be prominently be used as the orchestration service container uh, within this uh, demonstration. The business services will be provided by particularly any language. So you can have business services implemented in Java or .NET or Perl or uh, PHP. It doesn't, uh, doesn't really matter as long as there's a whistle-defined interface for that. And the decision services um, providing dynamic uh, business rules to the orchestration is going to be handled by JBoss rules. And the underlying connectivity and integration logic is going to be uh, dealing with uh, JBoss ESB and it's going to provide a series of infrastructure services to our um, application and business logic layer. <clears throat> Currently, um, out on, if you were to download the JBoss ESB uh, product from JBoss.org, there is an included, uh, through our partnership with uh, JBoss and Red Hat, an Active People Quick Start, which shows how the JBoss ESB can be integrated in with the Active People engine. One of the characteristics of this quick start is that it uh, specifically relies on SOAP and web services as the integration point. While this is nice and achieves a loosely coupled uh, integration uh, between the two sets of products, one may want something a little bit more tightly in inter intertwined with the JBoss ESB to provide optimizations uh, and to leverage the, the, the infrastructure of, JBoss e e of the JBoss ESB correctly. So if you're interested in looking at this particular type of integration, um, please have a look at the JBoss ESB download, and in there you'll find this quick start. However, in this demonstration, what I want to show you is an um, integration utilizing um, a lot of the capabilities of the Active People 5.0 uh, release, in particular support of um, additional service um, integration points beyond just SOAP-based web services. And in particular, especially within the JBoss ESB product, the ability to actually integrate in and orchestrate a set of JMS-based services. So in this demonstration, what we have here is a, an insurance quoting process. Okay, and what's unique about this is that instead of the, um, as, as typically you might have seen with Beeple orchestrations, is that the initial receive into the Beeple process starts with a web service call. In this particular case, if we look at step one down here, we're going to see that um, the way that this process has started is um, a little bit more legacy than uh, modern-based web services approaches, is that there's some FTP drop location that contains a CSV file with the information that's needed to actually um, produce the rate quote. Okay. So um, what's going to happen is we're going to have some file listener, and this is not going to be provided by active people, but we're going to be using the connectivity infrastructure services of the JBoss ESB product to do that is going to be listening for a file to be received at some particular location. That file happens to be a CSV file. And uh, once that file is picked up, the JBoss ESB product will um, take it and transform that CSV into some intermediate uh, XML file, and then that intermediate XML into some canonical XML file that's, that the active Beeple engine is ex expecting. Okay. 
Uh, from within the JBoss ESB uh, product, we're using uh, the Smooks transformer to allow us to, to fac fac uh, facilitate uh, that transformation. Once the CSV file has been properly transformed into a proper XML file, that XML file is dropped onto the JBoss ESB gateway, JMS gateway. And again, utilizing the uh, key features of our Active People 5.0 release, we can now have um, processes listening not only on web service endpoints, but also on JMS-based endpoints. So once that uh, our Active People engine detects a file coming in on a particular named queue or topic, in this case it's a queue, we're going to receive that quote request into the Beeple engine. The next step is actually to take that quote request and then pass it over to our uh, to a rules uh, engine. In this case, providing decision services to determine the risk uh, uh, the risk associated to this particular uh, person. Okay, so we're going to be utilizing the JBoss rules here to fire off a dynamic rule. Okay, once the rule comes back, it's going to come back with a message that's going to provide the information about their risk. We're then going to de make some decisions, which I'll show you in a second what that process would look like. And if everything is passing, we're going to then go ahead and generate a quote by invoking our quoting service. Um, sorry, by, yeah, our ge quote generation service. So in step four, what we're going to do is, 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 is do an invoke uh, within uh, the Beeple process, which is going to place a message onto the JMS gateway. The JMS gateway is going to receive that XML, again, using the Smooks transformer, transform that XML into a Java bean, and then call out to the quote generation service, which happens in this case to be just a plain old Java object. Okay. Once the quote generation has been uh, successfully uh, generated, then we're going to reply to the original receive that we had gotten in step two. And we're going to reply again via the same uh, mechanism, um, which is the JMS gateway. And what I'm just doing here just to kind of, you know, this could have gone out to another file, uh, which could have been picked up by another FTP server to kind of satisfy that. But what I'm doing in this particular demonstration is just to output that, that reply message out to the console so that you can see it. So all these different color-coded bits you're seeing, we're seeing that um, you know active people talking to JBoss ESB via the JMS transports. We have uh, the JBoss ESB talking to the file system using the file system gateway of JBoss's ESB. And we have specific Java calls here. Um, what's missing from all, any of this stuff is the, uh, the addition of anything related to SOAP-based um, invocations. And that's one of the uh, strong, one of the core features of the 5.0 release is that Beeple can be used now to, to orchestrate not only SOAP-based web services, but other services, including JMS, as we're seeing here. But in addition, some other functionality in around uh, REST support, as well as uh, uh, Java and plain old Java object support. Okay. <clears throat> so with that, I'm going to do a demonstration. And I'm going to come out to our Active People uh, console and I take a look at the process that we have deployed for this quoting uh, service. Again, the receive that we have is going to re uh, um, take in a message. In this case, is coming from the JBoss ESB via JMS that's going to uh, have rate quote information, basically who the person is, their age, what are they looking for, and so on. We're going to invoke the risk evaluation rule service. In this case, it's JBoss rules that we're invoking here directly. Based on the information coming back from the rules engine, we're going to either approve it as uh, low risk, approve it as medium risk, or reject it because it's high risk. And if it's been approved as low or medium, we're then going to invoke the generate quote service. And then finally, we're going to wrap up with a reply. So if you recall from the uh, presentation, the way this has started is by having some CSV files. So let's take a look at the CSV file that I have here. It's a uh, very simple CSV file that has the, the name of the uh, person accepting the or requesting the loan uh, policy quote, their age, the number of previous claims, um, some information in regard to their uh, the amount of how those previous claims were, um, and then what are they looking for for a policy. In this case, they're looking for fire and theft. Okay. So again, this is uh, legacy type stuff. This could have been done from a mainframe. It could have been come from uh, some other particular uh, C application that happen to be dropping things into a, a location. Um, what we're going to do then is going to take this and just simulate the fact that it's been dropped into this file location. Oh, before I do that, let me just bring up the consoles because that's the most important part to see all this stuff happening. Is we have up in this in this console we have the JBoss ESB running, and down in this console we have the Active Beeple engine running. So I'm going to take this and drop this into my file location. 
and you'll see immediately is that the JBoss ESB had picked it up um, and then transformed it into some XML. I have some output here that's saying the message, this is from the POJO, saying the message was received for quote generation purposes, and you'll see that information here like John Doe and Lowe and all this information that was transformed into the messages, and then we received a reply from the people process. Okay. If I was to look back at our consoling again, and I take a look at our list of um, processes uh, that have uh, executed, you see that we have one process that was completed. And if we drill into this process, we'll see that um, based on the information coming through, I'll click on this receive, we can look at the variable, okay? And we can see that uh, that CSV file that we had, John Doe 22 prior claims, had been transformed via the JBoss ESB into an XML message routed to the JMS queue, which was then picked up by our receive activity here, and then the process had, had begun. We did our invoke risk evaluation rule, in which we got back some information from the rules engine, in particular saying that the, that the profile for this person, based on the information, was a medium risk. Okay? And then based on that, we've kind of come down this path and then we re replied accordingly. Now, so what you've kind of seen there with uh, a lot of the consoling stuff is, is what you would see in a normal orchestration, except underlying this is that the messaging backbone is not SOAP, it's JMS. Now, one of the other uh, important bits here is that the fact that we have, have this rules engine in place. And uh, with the rules engine, what this allows us to do is to make changes, business people to actually make changes to the evaluation of this risk without ultimately not uh, without affecting and redeploying the business process nor any other types of uh, services or infrastructure that we have. So let's take a look at how we would um, make changes uh, to the, uh, how a business person might make changes to the, to the rule itself. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, utilizing some of the decision table stuff within JBoss rules, is we have a spreadsheet. Okay, and this spreadsheet is going to detect, depict all of the configuration aspects of, a, of, the, of the rule itself. And what I'm going to do as a business person is I'm realizing, well, based on the information that's coming through, we're approving a lot more medium-type uh, risk policies than we probably should be. So let's start tightening this up a little bit. So we're going to see there's a, a bunch of different things that can be configured and a bunch of different parameters that can be configured. But in particular, this one here, um, if it's a low uh, risk profile, they had a number of prior claims for two looking for fire and theft, as that request was, where we're going to return a medium risk. Well, what I want to do now is start returning a high risk in that case. We don't necessarily want to be approving those types of things. If they had um, prior claims at, you know, you know, one, maybe that we will actually make those a medium and so on. So for now, let's just assume that in this particular combination, the overall risk assessment is now going to be high. I'm going to save this spreadsheet. And um, the only thing that I really have left is just to make sure I can uh, take that spreadsheet information and update the rule engine dynamically. So that's all I had to do, update the rule engine. And now if I go and do that same exact bit here, let me just go back to my consoles and drop that same policy request CSV file into my drop location. What you'll see is, again, we're picked up here, but one of the things that we're missing here as, as opposed to what happened previously is that the generate uh, quote request hadn't, hadn't take, taken place. And if we look back at our consoling, let me shut down this one. Let's go back to our active people enterprise server, refresh our active process list. We'll now see that um, a second process was created that was successfully completed. But this time, if I look at this, just by changing that business rule, we have affected the business flow in the sense that now that the rules uh, inv invoke risk evaluation rule service had returned the fact that this is now a high risk, no longer a medium risk, and therefore has come down the high path and we have rejected that policy and replied accordingly to the, to the original requester. Okay, so there you can see some of the functionality of being able to, or some of the power there of having these dynamic business decisions uh, affecting the, uh, the ultimate flow of the, of the orchestration in, uh, that we've deployed. Okay. So um, with that, hopefully you were able to see some value out of um, some of the some of the nice features in, in the Active People 5.0 product, in particular uh, in support of JMS as a transport mechanism within the uh, People orchestrations, and also how JBoss rules and or JBoss rules slash rules can be used to create some uh, very sophisticated dynamic composite applications. Thank you.